for the Ethan Allen Warrior of the Good Advocacy Award. And the preview will be given by Stephanie Schumann.
upon the earth and that they may teach their children. Let me explain what an advocate is. An advocate is a person, a person who supports, a person who will plead, a person who will speak on another individual's behalf, a person who will fight for the right of another individual, a person who will build up, a person who will remove obstacles for the better of another individual. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9 say, speak out for those who cannot speak for the rights of all the destitute. Defend the rights of the poor and of the needy. When I was asked to do the introduction of Dr. Schoomaker, it kind of put me in a unique situation. But I have the pleasure of introducing a person that I work closely with. And that I have only known Dr. Schoomaker for a few short years. But it was not a difficult job to do. I asked for his resume and I asked for his bio, bio, but I'm not going to use that this afternoon. If I did, his resume would only tell us what he does and how he do it. But he is a champion of education, recognized by his peers nationally and worldwide. He is the president of this community's college, College of the Washita's. In a very short time, I have grown to respect him and value his leadership. Last year, he was named Hot Spring County Man of the Year as evident of his commitment to the resident from this community diverse population. He does what he does quite well. But this evening, I want you to know what I know about Dr. Schoomaker. I have gotten to know him during my service on the public involvement in the Chamber of Commerce and the newly revived leadership forum. I have gotten better acquainted with him, with his daughter Stephanie, and my cousin Kalia through the theater. And over time, we have talked freely about race and race relationships and equality for women and girls, as well as for men and for boys. Dr. Schoolmaker has worked for six years as the human rights and social service analyst for the city of Salem in Oregon. And he has shared his background and experiences. And I feel deep in my soul that he wasn't just doing this because I was a woman of color, but he has a genuine, genuine concern and a desire to advance the college core of diversity and equality. And he has continued to share over the years his personal experiences and stories that I know that I can work with him to help our community to become better and to become stronger. Now, unlike others who talk a good talk, this man is also a person who will walk the walk. In January of 2013, he was the main speaker at the MLK's banquet. Then in January of this year, he was the man that sponsored a table, I understand, the first time, and he said that it would not be the last time that the college had done this, but he sponsored a fully table of African-American students, faculty, staff, and administrators, took up more than a half of a table, and that was wonderful within itself at the MLK banquet. And also what was so extraordinary about it, his wife, and his child was there. They wasn't just there politicking. They was enjoying themselves. They were fully enjoying themselves because this is the type of family that he has. He believes in advocating. His family believes in advocating. And that's the type of individual that we need. One that is true from the heart and the soul. One that's going to get the job done. One that cares about our community. But. We wanted to be an exceptional individual. Then also that Monday night at the King Celebration at the Greater New Hope Baptist Church, which I have the pleasure of being a member at, he also announced that he had created a President's MLK scholarship for a student to come tuition free at the College of the Washita. Then I say again, he's not just about talk. He also walked the walk. 
Now it would have been acceptable if he had sent someone in his place because sometimes that's what happens. You make the plans, but you send someone else. He didn't do that. He was there himself to present it because he's an advocate. So this award is truly for Dr. Schoonmaker tonight. This past February, the Black History Month Committee, they selected this man to share real deep commitment. I applaud this community for selecting this man because here again, they know he's an advocate. He's for real. History tells us about the abolitionists, the freedom riders, and others who came to help with the plight of unacceptable, unacceptable conditions that we face. We did not fight our fight alone. This community has asked him to leave because we recognize his spirit. Brothers and sisters, I am proud to introduce you today. A man who names, if you read it, you might stumble over it. I think tonight even, the first time I heard it, I think somebody said Dr. Well, anyway, it's Dr. Schoonmaker. <laughs> a man who is willing and able to lead the way on behalf of the College of the Washington. But I also would like to leave you with a quote. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular. But he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. So tonight, for the Advocacy Award, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Schoonmaker. Um, on a very important date in our history. Um, 
I'm not sure where many of you were uh, 47 years ago. Um, many of you probably weren't around yet, um, but I was nine years old, and um, it was a it was a very very moving time to learn about the death of Martin Luther King on this day 47 years ago. And uh, I always keep close to my heart his I Have a Dream speech. And uh, his hope, his dream, that one day his children would not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. And I believe that we have come a ways towards that dream in these 47 years, but I do know we have more to go. And that I can be in a position and have the opportunity to speak for those who may not be able to speak or may not feel empowered to speak um, is certainly uh, something that I take on as a uh, responsibility and also as a, uh, a privilege. I have, um, I have come to this community. Um, I've been led to this community by my, uh, by my maker and by my Lord and Savior. And I have uh, been blessed in my life to have opportunity. One thing I've learned even just this week is the idea that all of us have potential. Even if we don't understand that and believe it, we each and every one of us have potential. But what we may not have is the opportunity to develop that potential. And that is one of the reasons that I wanted us to have a presidential scholarship for Martin Luther, in Martin Luther King's name, so that we could provide that kind of opportunity for someone in our community, someone who has the potential, but does not necessarily have the opportunity. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my walk on this earth, is that I, there is nothing that I can do on my own. There is no good deed that I do that is mine. It is only through the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit from God and from Jesus and my Savior. I receive my power and my strength. And there are those around me who I have the privilege and honor of working with every day. Members of this community. Members of this community long before I heard of Malvern, Arkansas. And there are times I think they look at me and I get a gleam in my eye and I start talking and they start shaking their heads. And they say, what now? What is he going to dream up now? But I think our dreams are important. And one of the things that we've been doing at the college is talking about engaging one another and engaging our students and engaging the community. Because if you are not engaged, then there is no education. And one thing that I can tell you that I am deeply passionate about is that education matters. We have come in this country to a point where we are now graduating 80% of students in the K-12 system. 80%, the greatest number ever in this country. 80%. And that is tremendous. But we also know that an education from high school, while important, is no longer enough. And so if we are going to truly transform and sustain our community, we need our young people, our Christian girl rocks, to get that high school graduation and then move on and keep going. 
And as long as I'm president at College of the Washingtons, there will be a place for that in this community. People will not have to go to another community to get that kind of education. Education matters. Faith matters. Hope matters. And love matters. It has been an honor to be amongst, named amongst the people who have been up here today receiving these awards. Um, I am humbled and honored to be in such august and esteemed company. Um, I think there are many advocates in this room. I appreciate that what I've tried to do is being recognized. I, I think there are times I wish I didn't advocate as much as I do, but I'm just built this way. I can't change that. And it's because that's how God made me. And I can either reject that or I can embrace it. And I will keep this award close by on those moments when I'm tempted to reject what God has blessed me with and to keep going on and keep fighting the good fight because it is worth fighting. Yes. I wanted to uh, close with um, this word of scripture from Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 7. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that we have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and the incredible wealth of his kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. We are united together this evening. As we go out and we go back into our neighborhoods and into our community, let us remember that we remain united with each other. And whether it is for strength or courage or faith or integrity or humanitarianism or success or advocacy, it is for the betterment of ourselves and our neighbors and our community from now and to forevermore. Thank you very much. Now Christian Girls Rock will play a special tribute to the men. 